So I'm, I'm speaking today with Guy Lane from Queensland, Australia, correct? That's correct, yes. Okay, anyhow, so I'm glad we got together and um, I would very much welcome this conversation because it's about, let's, let me frame it as the other side, that it's a spiritual lack, it's a metaphysical ungrounding of humanity where we've essentially been co-opted by, you can call it what you like, the illusion around us, consumerism, money, um, uh, uh, you can call it greed and, and avarice and, and all the, but we are trying to fill a spiritual lack with stuff and we're ignoring the, our impacts on the earth. Now, you approached me with a concept called Vitae Planeta and what comes of it. So I'd like to pass the, the baton to you. Vita is uh, an idea of trying to address the um, Anthropocene crisis, the ecological and climate crisis, um, uh, using the framework of spirituality. Mm -hmm. um, and when you uh, when you sort of go in, when you start going into the space of spirituality, you realise it's a very very difficult thing to define because it doesn't really exist in its own right. It is something that is culturally uh, determined and so it shifts in uh, in societies over time and it's very different in one society to another well but it may broadly, let me let me insert I'm um, my guests get used to my interruption that's right it may have an objective existence besides the the language that different cultures choose to explain and describe it with okay? yeah and so it's that yeah. to which we're yeah. referring the thing yes. itself yes. and not the name yes. for it that's used culturally yeah, and the fact that there is so much conversation about the thing suggests that the thing does exist, even though it is different in every culture and it's difficult to sort of pin down. But broadly speaking, what I'm referring to when I'm talking about spirituality is, uh, well, for one, one concept is the idea of cosmovision, which is this idea of where did we come from, where are we going, and where are we now with respect to that, that line. And so if you think of a cosmovision that uh, Christians might have adopted, for example, was that uh, God created the earth in seven days, uh, 12,000 years ago or whatever it was, and that you're you know, in it at the moment. And when you die, if you're good, you're going to go to heaven for eternity. There's, a, there's, a, there's a, a temporal spectrum from the beginning to the end of the story. Okay, that's a, it's referred to as a cosmovision. So, so if you look at most of the cosmovisions around, they're not, they're not conducive to ha having people live on the planet for a long, long time. And if you look at most of the things that pass as spirituality or spiritual philosophies, for example, the Christian tradition or the tradition of the mainstream religions or the sort of new age religions, um, and then you go into the sort of the realms of you know, the yoga and the dream captures and the crystals. If you look at all of those spiritual philosophies together that Western people, I'm talking specifically about Western people, uh, indulge in, none of them, none of them are fit for purpose in the face of the Anthropocene crisis. None of them have answers. And so the idea of Vita was simply to try and de define um, spiritual values that are not only helpful in the face of the Anthropocene crisis, but are also grounded in scientific principles so that we don't drift off into the universe chasing ghosts. Okay, now um, the Anthropocene crisis, the news, and you, you see it more and more. Mainstream, mainstream news media are carrying elements of what you and I call the Anthropocene crisis. The human footprint on Earth is blowing nature away. Yes, okay. yes, yeah. And fundamentally, that what we're fundamentally doing is we're undermining the life support system of the human race. Okay, and so if you think, okay, well, here we are in a situation where we've got, a, we're talking about Western culture, okay? We've got I know, half a billion people that might fall within that spectrum of the Western world. Um, and, and we're blindly destroying our life support system. And so then you look to spirituality as one of the big institutions of the world, if you like, and you say, well, what has spirituality got to say about it? And what I'm saying is that practically nothing. And that spirituality is something that is constantly um, evolving. So I've been in the process of helping to evolve a spirituality, a spiritual philosophy, if you like, that is absolutely suited to dealing with the Anthropocene crisis, but also setting ourselves up for what could potentially come after it, assuming that we're able to actually 
um, survive on this planet over the okay. coming uh, century. And, and well, I, I might take exception to only one point that you said, where you said other religions have, and you were pretty absolute, nothing to say about it. Um, look, I, I take I take your point, and and um, and I want to just sort of step back a little bit on that statement. Right? When I said that they have nothing to offer, I don't mean to say that there isn't elements within or fragmentary elements within each of these different traditions which okay. can be of value like christians for example in the opening chapters of the you know the genesis it talks about stewardship right and i could mm -hmm. refer to a science paper that uses the same terminology but what i'm saying to you is this is that in the face of our life support system collapsing around our ears what we need is a, a spiritual philosophy which is absolutely grounded in that space mm -hmm. rather than randomly having a few fragmentary references to that space Got it. We need a spiritual philosophy in which you will actually find the words ocean acidification. Okay. And <laughs> yeah. I went on to an online Bible and I typed in the word sustainability. I typed in climate. It doesn't show up. And now it's, obviously it doesn't show up. And this is the point is that most of our cultural or spiritual philosophies that the Western world indulges in uh, predate the scientific revolution and certainly predate the industrial revolution and the Anthropocene crisis. And that's why they say that they're not fit for purposes as organizations moving forward to deal with the crisis. And I don't believe that you'll find any of the Christian traditions that are able to pivot far or fast enough in order to actually catch up with the, the very thing that we need to be doing. And so they are, the idea with Vita was to actually try and tease out what that spiritual philosophy looked like, which is suited to the task, and then make it available to people. And just to be very clear, the, idea, the Vita is um, framed uh, to allow multiple um, spiritual belonging, okay? So you can adopt Vita as a philosophy, and that doesn't stop you being a Christian. You can have Christian Vedans, you can have Muslim Vedans, you can have atheist Vedans, you can have Vedans that like dream catchers and, and tarot and crystals. Mm. But, so what we're sort of trying to get to with people is that we need to embed the, the Vita uh, philosophy, or not Vita philosophy per se, but something like it, a nature-based spirituality we need to have that grounded okay and then upon which the other things can okay good yeah it, vita is not a religion it's a as you say it's a philosophy it's an yes. ecologically spiritual sound spiritual philosophy I like that's it. correct I like okay it. and so when i'm talking about spirituality i'm talking about things like answers to the big questions you know, where did we come from why are we here and particularly what happens when we die huge in fact where are, are we going are saying is that, is that if we're going to have a spiritual philosophy, we really ought to have it grounded on something real as opposed to just allowed to drift around because who knows where you'll end up if you're not grounded in reality. So a spiritual ph philosophy grounded in, an, in the best understanding of the earth system sciences. And that's, and that's what Vita is about. And so if I can just explain, for example, the cosmology, Vita's cosmology. Please, it's, go it's, for it. Yeah, well, you know, Vita's cosmology, so where do we come from? Well, you know, the Big Bang, happened. Uh, life on Earth evolved through the process of biogenesis and the evolutionary processes. And where we came from was what was the predecessor, our predecessors who were proto humans. Okay, so and then the question is, then what 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 is the purpose of our, our existence? Well, if you, you might ask the same of a tree, what is the purpose of a tree's existence or the existence of a whale or a snail, you know, and, and ultimately, the purpose of those organisms is to um, is to um, is to integrate in a in a holistic manner in the in the biosphere to perform functions within the biosphere to allow the biosphere to continue. I mean that's fundamentally what's going on with the evolutionary process. And so really that's the meaning of human existence from this spiritual philosophy's perspective. Is our role on Earth is to contribute to the whole in the same way that all of the rest of the organisms do. Is to interact so, productively with the rest of life. That's correct, exactly, and to and to try and foster what we refer to as the verdant age, which is a time when human civilization acts synergistically with the biosphere. Okay, and this is again, this is grounded in some scientific principles. For example, um, the astrophysicist Adam Frank refers to class five planets as being planets that have agency dominated biospheres. So norm, you, know, you normally regard a biosphere as not having uh, intent, doesn't have a plan per se, it just goes along with the physics and the biology. Whereas if you have humans involved or a you know, so-called intelligent species, then the biosphere can have intent. It can mm -hmm. actually choose to get bigger or smaller. 
Now, at the moment, we've actually got a biosphere with intent, except that it's not, uh, it's not intending to do anything particularly sensible. It's intending basically just to keep consuming resources, driving forward on following a spiritual philosophy called capitalism and endless growth. Whoa, I like that. That's, that capitalism and growth economics are, what did you call them? Oh, 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 you, you call them spiritual? Been, you call them spiritual? Well, a spiritual philosophy. I mean, this is the point with spirituality. Spiritual is, philosophy. It, is it, 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 it doesn't have a very clearly defined boundary. I'm being facetious. No, no, um, no, but, uh, but I'm trying to, I, no, I'm, trying to it, I'm following up on you. I want I to I want to augment that point because yeah. you know you, you set that one up for me to spike over the net. Um, yeah, yeah. My the point at which I started getting traction in the climate uh, community was at uh, COP twenty, I believe, in Lima, Peru, where I I put out one of my programs, one of my daily programs, and someone found it and put it on Reddit, and bingo, I got 22,000 views in a day. I had, you know, a few hundred subscribers. Um, and what was it? It was essentially the same point, making yes. the point that, that money and economics have become a pseudo-religion yes. that, that have... Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, so in, in a way there, if, you know, back to this idea of, of whether spirituality exists as a natural thing, then one way of seeing it is like a, um, uh, uh, like, a, like a stomach, if you like, that has hunger, a hunger for something. We're hungering for something. We're hungering for a, a meaning. We're hungering for uh, uh, to, uh, to know where we fit within a grand plan, okay? So if you imagine using that analogy of a hunger, having a stomach which is empty, you could fill that stomach with junk food and soft drinks and it would be full, okay? Alternatively, you could fill that, that stomach with a really healthy, nutritious meal and a nice glass of red or something like that, and it would also be full. You've ended the hunger. But the point is that there's a consequence to those two different ways of ending the hunger. Mm -hmm. And with respect to the planet that we live on right now, there is a consequence to having filled that hole with classic cars, dream catchers, crystals, mainstream religion, new age religion, and, and the fundamental- Trips to Las uh, Vegas, trips to whatever. Buying stuff, going shopping. Gucci fashion. In indulging in pets, classic cars, holidays, all of these things that, that fill us up, okay? The fundamental opportunity cost of those things, the fundamental cost of those things is the opportunity cost of the things that we're not doing in relation to fulfilling our role on this planet, which is to be a good organism and nurture the host. And so, and so what we're trying to do with Vita is we're just trying to find a way to communicate that simple message that says, fill yourself up with this. And then you don't have to then wonder where you fit into the world. You'll understand where you fit yeah. into the world. I think that one could fill themselves with whatever they want to fill themselves and that they could die and feel like they've had a good life, okay? The question is, what do they leave behind? And when you, when you fill yourself with, you know, the stuff that you're referring to back then, what you leave behind is a, a planet where the life support system is about to fall over for the next generation. Um, and because, and because the, our spiritual philosophy- I want to correct you there. Drivers, I want to correct you there. Okay, this generation. You just fell, you, you <laughs> fell into a trap. The trap was, you want to pin it on, well, it's, it's our children's problem which no, gives no. us as a, the adults in the room, the supposed yeah. adults in the room, a free pass because, oh, it's our children's, it's gonna happen to us. We, those of us alive now, are, are, there's a high likelihood that we are gonna get creamed by yeah. the, the crisis. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, and that's a common trope that I fall into. And I absolutely agree too. I'm you and 98% of humanity. I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm 53. I fully expect to see, uh, I mean, I'd throw a random number. I expect that by the time I'm assuming I get to live, say, 83, 30 years, I expect to see at least a quarter of the world's population having been taken off this planet. Well, I'm 70, and, almost 72, and I've got cancer, as my audience knows. And the oncologists say, you've got a year or two more, and I intend to live beyond that. But I am both hoping and dreading what I will see in the in the rest of my life because yes, it's yeah, coming yeah, quick. Yeah. The crunch yeah. is coming quick. That's right. Uh, I'll just give it a, a little example of this. We had a I was in a two about a week and a half ago. I was down in Brisbane. I was with a friend, 
and we had a hailstorm and my car was parked outside on the street and I was worried about my car because these hailstones were like about two, three centimeters across. In the Crouchy the windshield. Road. Well, no, my car was fine, but, I, but one of the cells of that storm had taken out a suburb uh, that we went and visited the next day um, and drove around. And um, all of the houses that ha had tile roofs had Shut like up. dozens of holes smashed through that went not only cracked the tile, went through and took out the ceiling material and even bounced off the ground, threatening people who were inside the house. And we were driving around the suburb and there's a lot of solar PV, the solar panels on the roofs in Australia. Every one of these solar power systems was annihilated. It's, it, climate chaos is at our doorstep, correct? Yeah. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. enough with that, what? Yeah. Let's answer the question, what do we do? Okay, so this, this is a diagram that came out of a science paper that was uh, put out in um, uh, December 2018 uh, mm -hmm. by uh, Will Steffen and others. And the, the, the paper was called uh, Trajectories of the Earth System in the Anthropocene. And um, I refer to this diagram a lot because it sort of says, it says a lot. And I'll just walk you through this diagram very, very quickly. Please, um, please. Fascinating. Yeah. So, so basically, the, the axes show uh, the temperature, uh, global average temperatures going from the bottom upwards. And then you'll see on the, uh, the horizontal axis, you've got sea level increasing from the left hand side where it's low to the right hand side while it's high. And as all of the data inside the graph is running basically at 45 degrees from the bottom left up, that sort of shows the relationship between as the temperature goes up, the sea level goes up. And this is basic stuff. Okay, so as the yep. global average temperature goes up, the ice melts on the um, on the on the Greenland and the Antarctic, um, and uh, and the Alpine regions, um, and then that adds to the sea level. The sea level goes up. So then, as the temperatures drop, and then you get more snow falling onto those land ma those land masses, and the ice builds up, then the the sea level goes down. Right. So if you just okay. concentrate on the lower section, the the blue circle. Mm -hmm. So this is basically showing the relationship between global average temperatures and sea level in a 100,000 year cycle. So if you, so exactly, if you go around that circle once, that's 100,000 years. And mm -hmm. that's basically been the state of the planet over the last 2 million years or so, this glacial interglacial cycle. Well, where we are now, um, you'll see that the, where the letter A is exactly. Yep. So basically what's happened because we've been pouring all of the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, we've increased the average temperature. We've now departed that cycle. We're out of that cycle now. And we're now in the basically heading in the direction of that dark red arrow. Okay, now um, that's theoretically right. around around there, there are two the there are that's two right. lobes up here. One of them okay. says stabilized Earth, and so if, if I may yes. for a moment, because I've yes, seen please. that paper, I yep. I studied it when it came out. So the stabilized Earth is if humanity is wise enough to do what's necessary we might be able to stabilize the earth below two degree, yep. an, an average, a mean warming of two degrees from pre-industrial times, yep. and, and then bring it back down and regain this, this cycle whereby, well, over a long period, 100,000 year cycle, we go into um, uh, ice ages, come out, gets warm enough for life to thrive, and then we go back in. That's been uh, the history. But, no, but that, that's not that's not how I, that, that's not how it is. The diagram is red. I don't think the proposal. You see, a glaciation is almost as bad as a hothouse in a way. I mean, a glaciation puts three kilometers of ice over over Western Europe. So the glaciation oh. is is not necessarily a great thing to go back into. The idea of the stabilized Earth is conceivably that you could basically just sit in that loop around between where A and B is. Uh huh. Right? Okay. And, and effectively, the way you do that is you, you just, you, you, we become the, the wise stewards of the whole Earth system. We manage and monitor and control the total amount of CO2 in the atmosphere and other greenhouse gases to keep the temperatures just where we like them. This is what Adam Frank refers to as an agency dominated biosphere, a biosphere that's got somebody saying, whoa, 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 we want it just like that instead of letting somebody it go can, between these cycles. Somebody who can turn the dials and say, okay, too much fossil fuels, let's. Okay. Yeah, and so and so the other alternative is beyond. If we keep going up the main red line, which is beyond two degrees, we trigger the cascade of climate tipping points, and then basically what happens is that the planet heats up even further, irrespective of what we do, and that basically takes down most life on Earth, and effectively a rerun of the Permian extinction, just a hundred times faster. 
Um, and that's basically where we're going to go to unless we start re reining back fossil fuel emissions, uh, greenhouse gas emissions, and also we need to start sucking carbon out of the atmosphere in order to, you know, reduce the total stock of, of, um, of you know, the radiative forcing. So that's a scientific concept. That's a scientific principle that's grounded on the latest, that's not correct. Uh, the, the understanding of the Earth system over hundreds of millions of years. That these, these are patterns that you can see replicating over the Earth system over hundreds of millions of years. And that diagram forms part of Vita's um, sort of understanding of the world and the future and what potentially uh, is available to us in the future. So can you go now to the Vita diagram? Okay, so this, this diagram is fundamental to Vita um, uh, and so it, it, obviously you can see how it's replicated the, um, the, the scientific diagram. Mm -hmm. And the two core things to see in this is the, the skull creature that I refer to as the, um, the anthronaut, which is basically representing the mass extinction of not only the humans represented by the skull, but uh, most life on earth represented by the, uh, the nautilus, um, which is the pathway that we go on to if we uh, trigger the cascade of climate tipping points, which we'll do if we don't euthanize the fossil fuel industry and pull trillions of tons of carbon out of the atmosphere in the coming decades. But the opp opportunity is that if we can get through this crisis, the Anthropocene crisis, which is ecological and um, uh, climate related, and, and of course, there's a whole bunch of other aspects to the Anthropocene crisis, including uh, nu nuclear weapons, for example. But the, the possibility is that we can find ourselves in that stabilized earth place. And if we do develop a <clears throat> synergistic relationship with the biosphere, we could potentially live on this planet for millions of years into the future in a very robust and healthy environment where there's plenty of fish in the ocean, plenty of forests, plenty of wilderness, where the cities uh, look like forests, and indeed where- But the there are maybe not quite as many humans. Well, there almost certainly won't be as many because I, I can see in the coming decades that there's gonna be a great winnowing away of human population. It's happening now principally through uh, the, the loss of food production because of increased heating and extreme weather. And, and you know, pandemics are a factor of life here to stay. Yeah. But conceivably, if we can get through the crisis and then we can re-establish this a civilization, not this civilization, a different civilization, we, the one that operates synergistically with nature, then we could potentially be on this planet for millions of years. I used the picture of the, um, uh, of the um, uh, the Nautilus in that little skull picture, because the Nautilus is a creature that has been on this planet for 500 million years. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so 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 if a if a bit of seafood can last 500 millions of years, maybe the people that eat the seafood can actually have a go at that sort of time frame ourselves. Now, there's lots of reasons why the humans wouldn't survive 500 millions of years, because there's all sorts of other natural cataclysms that will event will happen to the Earth, right? So it's good possible that we could actually enter the verdant age only to be snuffed out by an asteroid 100, 200 years down the track. I want to have left behind stepping stones to the verdant age. Mm -hmm. And because our spiritual beliefs guide our actions. And until Vita and these words and the diagrams that have been put on, I have not seen anything that even approximate, approximates this. And again, I don't want to be critical of the traditional uh, spiritual philosophies, but the closest there is really uh, out there to something like this would be Taoism, and that was 3,000 years old, which says nothing about the Anthropocene crisis and nuclear weapons and ecosystems collapse. And so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to draw on these ancient, ancient philosophies where there is useful, um, where there is useful material, for example, Taoism, and Shinto is another one, but also uh, Stoicism, which is not a spiritual philosophy per se, but a philosophy nonetheless. Um, and, and incorporate into those uh, the, the meaningful parts of those ancient wisdoms um, and in, integrate into that the scientific and contemporary understanding and then to create a spiritual philosophy which will suited to the times that we're in today. Um, well, look, one of the, one of the concepts um, uh, within Vita is uh, the idea of soul nostalgia care, right? So, so, so in the way that, um, say, for example, Christian... Um, uh, uh, organizations offer pastoral care, which is basically attending to people's emotional and spiritual needs. Um, 
so such a thing exists within Vita, and we refer to it as solastalgia care. You're going to have to spell that for me. I don't understand. Uh, yeah, it's um, S O L A Solar S T A L I G I A Solastalgia. Like nostalgia, but it's solastalgia. Uh, Did you make yeah, up the term? No, 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 no. It's a um, an Australian philosopher who coined the phrase. And it brings together the idea of uh, solace and nostalgia. Okay. And it brings together the idea of the emotional sensation of seeing your home destroyed by fire or like, for example, the people we were talking about in that suburb that had their ceilings collapsed around them and all the water came in and they couldn't live in their house. They go back to the house and the house is sort of still there, but they feel this longing for the house the way it was. And so this is an emotional stressor that is coming on more and more people as they understand the climate crisis is taking away the things that they love. It's like a sort of homesickness while you're actually still physically at the home. Hmm. Okay. So okay. it's an emotional distress associated with the destruction of, of, of not only the environment, but the things that we've created. And so one of the roles that the Vitans would play, one of the roles that people who follow Vita would be to understand these things and be able to offer um, care, spiritual and emotional care to people who are suffering. And so you can imagine a culture, a global civilization, where that's how it gets its living, by regenerating nature and fostering the growth of things rather than just constantly cutting things down and digging things up. Yeah. So we've already got, we've already got the, many of the tools that we need to deploy into this future world, right? The question, but we, what we don't have is a price on carbon. What we don't have is proper you know, government policy that says we've got to pull the carbon out of the atmosphere and do it in a way that restores soils and do it in yes. a way that regrows forests, right? So yes, these, you know, we're, we're putting in a, a tip of the hat for regenerative agriculture. Absolutely. absolutely. Okay, and again, these are concepts that much of our audience will know, but many in our audience will not know. Regenerative yeah. agriculture is the idea that we don't have to do the industrial model of a tractor going back and forth between the rows, spreading poisons and spreading fertilizers and essentially just using dead earth with no microscopic activity as a matrix for holding roots, which we feed artificially and we poison the weeds. And that's the industrial model. But regenerative yeah. agriculture says there's a hell of a lot of jobs in people taking care of farming, but we have to value their produce, their effort greater. And currently the industrial model makes it cheap. And so we teach people consume cheap food. Doesn't matter that it's, yeah, yeah. That it's got poison spread all over it. That doesn't matter. You know, that, that, that's the healthcare industry. That's their, their problem yeah. or their boon. So yeah, okay, yeah. res res restoration agriculture is, we think and use permaculture and use species that sequester carbon in long, deep root systems. So when the roots die, that carbon is buried yeah, for yeah, yeah. four thousands of years. Yeah. So. Okay, so you, 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 I, think you, I think we've got to an important point of this conversation is that we are now talking about spiritual philosophy. We're now talking about cosmovision and trying to understand where we as human beings fit into this big picture. And we're doing that through a conversation about regenerative agriculture, about carbon drawdown, about the planetary boundaries. And there's practically no spiritual um, philosophy out there which would foster that conversation. Normally you'd be talking about how to bless your, you know, your runes or something. Yeah, and so I that's, I think this is where we're trying to come to with Vita. Vita becomes a philosophical foundation for, um, civilization to move forward as opposed to basically fall off the cliff let's just let's just for now call it a, a big tent hoping to become bigger and what gets discussed <laughs> inside that that tent is a um <clears throat> a revival <throat> a revival of a different sort we're talking about a spiritual revival but not one that has a specifically religious context <laughs>